I had just given birth to my now five month old Jonah and I was watching the news and I heard on the news that the Reproductive Health Act had just been passed. Developing news out of Albany about reproductive rights here in the Empire State. The state legislature has passed the Reproductive Health Act. Provisions in the bill include dropping most restrictions on abortions after 24 weeks, allowing midwives and nurse practitioners to perform abortions, and ending criminal charges for harming children in the womb. I literally watched people in government, men and women, standing and applauding this decision. And I just, I'm looking at my baby in my arms and thinking about my own experience with, with abortion. And it just stirred up something in me to, to share the truth. Um, my name is Nikki. And um, I've had two abortions. At both points in my life, I was severely addicted to drugs. To me, and in my mentality at the time, like it was totally an acceptable thing. It was the only option. There just wasn't any other way to go because, you know, considering um, adoption was out of the question because I would have a drug addicted baby. I, I, um, I honestly had no idea at the time what I was doing. So the first time I had unprotected sex, I got pregnant. My view on sex and relationships had already been distorted. They were already perverted. When the option of abortion uh, was proposed to me, I I thought it's legal, so it can't be wrong. It's my body, it's my choice, I'm not hurting anybody. I was too young, I didn't, I didn't think about the future, I thought about the moment. I had two children already from two different fathers. Both relationships were filled with drug abuse and we weren't there for our kids and I, I didn't even think about adoption, honestly. And if I did, I threw it out of my head thinking how could I keep, have the baby grow inside of me as an addict. I didn't, I wasn't thinking let me get help and get clean for this baby. I was thinking I can't do it. And so um, it just seemed like the only option at the time. My mom took me. We get there and there were people protesting outside. They don't know, this. that's just, you know, religious fanatics, they, it's my choice. You can't tell me what to do with my body. My heart started beating. I remember my stomach was in knots. I just, I started to really get a sense, I think, of what I was doing when we were on our way there. The waiting room was full. A lot of young girls were in there. And, and there were girls making jokes about how light of an incident it was. I remember one girl saying, it's just a little egg yolk. And I was like, it, it was, I was already hurting and I hadn't even gone through the process yet. The sound. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. I tried not to hear and I tried not to see and I tried to just shut myself off. Like even up into getting in the chair and the nurse is saying this is gonna be quick and painless. I think I was in and out in a matter of an hour, hour and a half, it was so quick. Nothing could have prepared me because when, when she did it, I felt death. I thought abortion was an okay thing to do. Even then I knew that I had just killed my baby. still never really dealt with it. I just put on this facade of, I did it, it, it was legal, it doesn't bother me. The depression that came after the abortion was debilitating. I didn't get out of bed for like 16 days. Looking back, I, I see how that began a season in my life of drugs and alcohol and, 
and I went into the deepest addiction of my life. The addiction that I was already in just, man, it just took off. So I'm not one of the ones that just tucked it away. I was like severely affected by it. And I, after already not being a mom to two kids, it's like now I just, I felt like I murdered a baby. After that, I truly believed that I was never going to be a mother. I wasn't supposed to be a mother. It was right. What I did was right. That I think I truly saw myself as a monster. I pictured myself like a child that was being pushed to do something that I didn't want to do, and I did it because the world told me it was right, that it was okay, that it was my right. And then they left me in that playground by myself. After this procedure was done, there was there's there's just nobody that helps you through the healing process. When I gave my life to the Lord, he began to deal with those deep things in me. I ended up getting born again, and my life was completely, radically transformed. And so I had a lot of different deep encounters with his presence and his love. The walls just came down, and I kind of had to come face to face with the decisions that I had made. And the memories of everything started coming to my mind. And I would always just like shrug them away. I mean, I believe I'm forgiven. I believed God loved me no matter what. But I heard the voice of the Lord in that moment say, no, let him come. Because I'm going to go through the pain with you. It was like a physical sensation came up on the inside that like, it just dropped to the floor. Um, and I knew that I was finally mourning um, my children. And I just felt the Lord hold me in that moment and I wept and wept. There was a huge puddle on the floor. It was such a release. And that wasn't even the end of it. Like we went to, there was this radical hippie prophet woman. She was wonderful. And she looks right at me in front of everybody. And she says, she points at me and she says, you, she says, you have children in heaven. And she said, she said, they want you to know that they forgive you and they love you so much and you're going to see them again. <laughs> I still don't feel good about what I did, but I'm healed from it because I can talk about it. You know, but even though I had done this thing, I was still their mother. I just can't even, that's like, it's like encountering the love of God for the first time. It just makes no sense, and, um, but it sets you free. The reassurance that the Lord has given me that there's forgiveness for what I did is the only thing that has ever allowed me to be free from the pain of the abortion. There's certain things you do you can never take back. But we can move forward. I think the redemption is is now, is what, what we're doing right now. To bring awareness to an uncomfortable topic. You know, for those who have had an abortion, to, to just share that there is redemption, that there is healing, that there is freedom available to you, that God can take this situation in your life and he can use it for the good to save the lives of of children this is such a controversial subject that so many people don't want to talk about um but my gosh we're the church of jesus christ and if no if if, if anybody's going to tell the truth it's got to be us